Hello and welcome. I'm Jason L. Jones, and you're watching Head to Head with UATV. The, minute, the Venice Commission assessed the amendments to the legal framework in Ukraine. The commission concluded that recent legislative changes in Ukraine's judiciary system, in particular the cutting of the number of judges of the Supreme Court of Ukraine, poses a threat to its stability and independence. To discuss this, we are joined in the studio today by Stepan Berko. He is the advocacy manager at DeJour Foundation. Hello, and thank Hello. you for joining us. So, first and foremost, uh, for our viewers at home who aren't familiar with the Venice Commission, uh, can you explain to uh, um, to us briefly what it is and what what's the significance of its conclusion? Yeah, so the Venice Commission is uh, a body uh, that is formed by the member states of the Council of Europe, mm -hmm. and its primary objective is to assess the legislative changes in the members of the Council of Europe, mm -hmm. uh, whether they comply with the standards of European of the European. Uh, uh, countries. I mm -hmm. mean, the, the the Council of Europe, uh, the the standards of the European Co Court of Human Rights, mm -hmm. and in case uh, you described, the the Venice Commission was assessing the draft law 193 that mm -hmm. amended uh, some provisions of the the law on the judiciary and the law on the High Council of Justice. Okay. Okay. And so, um, do you have any criticism about the law, the 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 commission, or? Um, my organization and uh, our partners from other uh, civil society organizations, we criticized some provisions of the law, mm -hmm. uh, especially those concerning the cutting the numbers of the Supreme Court judges yep. and uh, uh, establishing a new competition for the new Supreme Court. Uh, and these are the provisions the Venice Commission has criticized as well. So mm -hmm. it's, not, it's no surprise that we received this uh, opinion. Uh, on the other hand, the Venice Commission um, welcomed some provisions regarding the uh, relaunching of the High Qualification Commission of mm -hmm. Justice, uh, ju Judges and um, uh, some instruments for cleaning the High Council of Justice. These two bodies of judicial governance are uh, very important in terms of uh, cleaning the judiciary and uh, uh, these bodies decide who is in the system and who is not. The mm -hmm. Venice Commission vel welcomed the, the provisions that provide for cleaning these bodies because there are some um, corrupt members in these mm. bodies and mm. actually uh, the fact that we haven't seen uh, a big success in, in the judicial reform in recent years, it's because of these bodies uh, and some misconduct their members are, uh, have done. Mm, okay. Uh, in what ways do you think they've interfered with the process? Uh, the answer is very, you know, easy. Uh, they have appointed those who are corrupt judges or uh, in uh, the integrity of which there are uh, serious doubts and they have not punished any of the judges that uh, have clearly um, made some misconduct uh, previously. Uh, for example, judges from the Maidan, mm. the times when they were pursuing the activists and it was clearly stated in some decisions of the European Court of Human Rights the High Council of Justice didn't react on these cases. So these are the, the bodies that are responsible for, what we're, for where we are now in the judicial reform. Um, and um, some in Ukraine are trying to um, interpret the decision of the Venice Commission as uh, in a way that uh, the Venice Commission totally um, totally didn't like the, the changes in, in the law. Mm -hmm. However, it's not, uh, you know, the Venice Commission doesn't give a simple answer to all the questions. It is, it is always assessing what is bad and what is good. And it uh, has uh, clearly said that uh, the cleaning, the, the cut, cutting the Supreme Court is not, uh, does not comply with the uh, principle of the independence of the judiciary. However, those instruments for cleaning the uh, judicial governance bodies, they have to be uh, used, especially in terms that uh, those uh, instruments provide for international experts to participate in the process of cleaning these uh, judicial governance bodies. Okay, okay. And so what does the, um, the, what are the praises that the Venice Commission has about the amendments? If there are any. Uh, they're saying that um, they um, 
support the the participation of the international experts mm -hmm. uh, and this they have actually uh, confirmed their uh, previous decision on supporting international experts in judicial forum of Ukraine because uh, international experts have already participated in uh, appointing the judges to the high anti-corruption court so the vision uh, the Venice Commission has uh, uh, welcomed this broadening of this experience this successful experience um, however, uh, they, the, the, the Venice Commission members didn't like the idea that the, the, the whole uh, um, composition of the High Qualification Commission start, uh, stopped uh, working since 7th of November and mm. uh, before the new composition is formed there is this time gap where the qualification assessment of the judges cannot be performed. So they didn't really like this uh, uh, idea and they called for such uh, such extreme measures not to be used in the future um, and uh, regarding the um, regarding the cleaning the high council of justice uh, they, they had some remarks about the possible unconstitutionality of the um, powers of this um, there's the, the law provides for the creation of a sus subsidiary body of the High Council of Justice, so-called mm. Ethics Commission, mm, which will mm. screen the members of the High Council of Justice and initiate their dismissal in case they, are, they don't comply the integrity criteria. So the Venice Commission is saying that there could be some problems with the Constitution. However, the Venice Commission is not um, checking on the, com uh, on the constitutionality of our laws. It's the prior power of the Constitutional Court. Uh, and I would say that I wouldn't agree with this position because uh, the Venice Commission has previously assessed the draft law, uh, which is law right now, mm -hmm. uh, on the Constitutional Court. And the same model w was used uh, in the Constitutional Court and the Ves Venice Commission did not regard this, these provisions as uh, posing some threat to the integrity and independence of the Constitutional Court. So mm -hmm. I would say that in this, in this part, uh, the position of the uh, Venice Commission is somehow Mm, inconsistent. Mm. Why do you think that is? Like, why did they not keep I those think, in account? Yeah, uh, I think um, when the Venice Commission is um, considering the cases, they all, always consider also the, the circumstances in, in which the country uh, is operating and which, in which the law will be implemented. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think in view of the overwhelming uh, victory of uh, Sluha Narod, party uh, mm. on the president on the parliamentary election mm. and uh, concerning the fact that uh, we have uh, this majority one party majority in the parliament uh, they might see these um, this the, these circumstances as a um, precondition for some uh, uh, anti-democratic uh, movement in Ukraine mm. so uh, giving these uh, powers to um, screen or clean the uh, one of the uh, highest judicial governance mm. bodies could give more uh, power to the executive and to the uh, the parliament to even more uh, um, to th strengthen their power overall in, in the country okay and uh, regarding the with the high qualification commission of judges like the type of as far as the qualification, like how are they vetting them? What, what do you, are you familiar with how they're vetting them and what type of qualifications are they looking for in particular, in particular? And if, um, if they're reasonable, like if they're... You mean the, the, the judges or the members for the of the... For the judges, um, who, they're, who they're wanting to bring in. Or, uh, you see that the biggest problem with the previous compositions of the higher uh, high qualification commission was that they didn't have any particular criteria mm. and uh, set of procedures that they were using to say this one is uh, a, a, a judge with a high integrity mm. and this one is not so mm. they were very inconsistent in their decisions and even there were cases when uh, in one um, in the competition for the Supreme Court, the judge was uh, this, the, the High Qualification Commission decided that the judge is uh, lacks integrity. And on the other side, within the process of uh, qualification assessment of judges that every judge is going right mm -hmm. now through in Ukraine, mm -hmm. they decided that this judge has uh, uh, this uh, uh, is uh, has integrity, mm -hmm. and that 
and thus can be uh, can continue uh, being a judge. Mm. So, in this regarding the same person, the same set of mm. people using the same criteria and the same process. Yeah. So th this is um, something that we were experiencing during the last three years. Mm. And um, what the law provides is that the new qualification commission will be appointed by the commission where mm. the international experts will play, play a crucial role. And why we uh, believe that this process can be successful, successful because we have uh, uh, experience of appointing the judges uh, to the uh, high anti-corruption court. And when you compare this court to the Supreme Court that we had, because uh, the Supreme Court was uh, uh, appointed uh, within a very similar procedure, uh, there is, uh, you know, and there is difference because there are no uh, corrupt. Uh, corrupt uh, uh, judges and dubious judges in the high anti-corruption court and then there are 44 are out of uh, 193 judges in the Supreme Court mm. that had you know this experience of uh, making um, um, some decisions uh, for the uh, executive and the political party so I mean uh, this is a very different process and the approach of uh, participation of the international experts is successful, so we have to broaden this approach. Okay. And the Venice Commission supported this idea. Okay, well, hopefully it all works out for Ukraine in, in this regard and you know, getting some good people in there in the office. So thank you so much, uh, thank Esteban, you. for all, all your insights. I uh, hope to have you back again soon. Okay, so that was uh, Stepan Burko. He is an advocacy uh, manager at the Jura Foundation. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for the rest. Yeah.